Growing up in the 70s would have been a special time, especially if you grew up watching The Brady Bunch. The success of the show led to all sorts of spin-offs and reunion shows. But if you happen to catch the short-lived Brady Bunch Variety Hour, you got to see a different side to this family than most people ever expected. Yet there's more to this one-season wonder than most people know about. Facts First presents Behind the Scenes of the Brady Bunch Variety Hour. If you remember seeing this show on television, show us by clicking the like button. And make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell for more videos like this. Number 1. How did this show ever get made? Before the show ever got around to being discussed, another variety show decided to bring on two of the original Brady Bunch actors for a skit. The increasingly popular Donnie and Marie show was used to having guest appearances for their singing and dancing numbers. In 1976, towards the end of September, they filmed an episode with Maureen McCormick and Barry Williams, who played Marsha and Greg on The Brady Bunch. That Donnie and Marie episode then aired on TV less than a month later and got great ratings as a result. It didn't take more than a phone call to producers Sid and Marty Croft, and the Brady Bunch variety show was thrown together in record time. In just one month, they had everything ready to film the first show. But what made this variety show different than others is that it was more of a reality show revolving around the variety show. This was a concept that was very ahead of its time for 1976 television viewers, which is what made this show that much more bizarre than what people were expecting from the Brady Bunch family. Number 2. Sherwood Schwartz Hated the Idea The original producer of The Brady Bunch Show, Sherwood Schwartz, wasn't involved this time around. In fact, he wasn't even consulted. For whatever reason, the show starts with the Brady family landing a variety show. The whole family would then discuss how the show was put together for each episode. It seems that Mike, the caring father, decided to leave his architect job to sing and dance instead. And the old Brady house, well, that was also different from the original show. Even the Brady kids were living in their own apartments. As crazy as it sounds, this variety show lasted just nine episodes. But it dealt with more than a few problems aside from Sherwood Schwartz hating the show idea altogether. Many of the cast members that took this short-lived gig all had their own idea of what the Brady family was all about, making it problematic behind the scenes for each episode filmed. Number 3. Glitter, a big swimming pool, and dolphins? What happens when you hire Sid and Marty Croft at the height of their career in Hollywood to produce a show with the Brady family? Well, if you've ever seen H.R. Puff and Stuff or Sigmund and the Sea Monsters, you know they're big on bright colors, hippie outfits, and cheaply made sets with tons of glitter. But the chance to imagine the Brady universe went one step further, featuring all their wackiness complete with a giant swimming pool. While the show was still being planned, Sid Croft had the idea of using live dolphins in the freshwater swimming tank. Not knowing that dolphins need salt water, Sid was insisting it was a great idea. But not so great for the unlucky dolphins that might not do so well living in a chlorine-filled water tank. At the last minute, the idea was scrapped along with many other insane ideas such as water slides and swimming girls flying through the air. Number 4. Robert Reed Loved the Show in the original series, Mike was always telling his side of the fatherly advice, but it was well known that Robert Reed was still in the closet back in those days. Yet that didn't affect his acting career, and he took every role seriously and professionally. When he was approached to reprise the role of Mike Brady, it didn't take much thought to accept the offer. Not only did he like that his character got to take a backseat as the ever-present father figure, but he could also sing and dance too. But more importantly, he thought it would be more fun playing the character outside the watchful eye of Sherwood Schwartz. It seems he hated working with the original producer and decided it would be a good chance to give Mike Brady more pizzazz than what he portrayed on the original show. Although he didn't sing or dance all that well, he gave each episode his best effort and enjoyed every minute of this midlife crisis-loving character. Number 5. Jan Got Replaced Originally, the role of Jan, played by Eve Plum, was going to be a part of the variety show cast. And her father was also a music producer who worked closely with Sid and Marty Croft. Yet, aside from this connection, her dad wasn't too happy with the deal Sid and Marty gave to Eve. He knew these two producers were hotshots in the biz, but he also wanted to see his daughter get more professional acting jobs. So, for obligation reasons, Eve had agreed to do just a few episodes that gave her more time to pursue her serious acting career. 
But Sid and Marty didn't like hearing that and gave her an ultimatum to do every episode or be replaced. Eve decided not to do the show, and it was replaced by Jerry Reichel instead. Not that Jerry did a terrible job as the character of Jan. She looked and played the part that everyone would expect. And if you were a fan of the original series, this fake Jan was one more reason why it was doomed to fail. Which actor was better at playing Jan? Was it Eve Plum or Jerry Reichel? Let us know in the comments below, and press the like button. Number 6. They Brought Back Alice While it was a scramble to bring the original cast back together, one character who isn't a Brady was chosen at the last minute to be a part of the show. Everybody remembers Alice, the tireless housekeeper who lives with the Brady family. They were filming the very first episode when the cast realized Alice wasn't on the show, so the producers quickly had to hunt down Ann B. Davis to add her to the cast. But it wasn't easy since Ann Davis had left Hollywood to join an Episcopal church flock. They tracked her down through her close friends, and it turned out she was living in Colorado as a volunteer for the church. When she was told she needed to be a part of the show, she happily agreed, but was also very dedicated to her religious beliefs. When they replaced Sam the Butcher with a new boyfriend played by Rip Taylor, she was unhappy working with him despite keeping it professional. It seems that because Rip Taylor was openly gay, Anne was offended by his flamboyant behavior on set. Number 7. Marsha's Meltdown Maureen McCormick returned to play Marsha, but she wasn't quite the same as she was during the original Brady Bunch run. The stardom of her character and money Maureen earned from acting led her to have a drug addiction that was now affecting her job. The production hired special helpers and aides who kept an eye on Maureen so she wouldn't disappear from the soundstage while they were filming. Oftentimes, she would show up with bruises on her legs and needed colored stockings to hide them. After the first couple episodes, the outfits had to change to keep up with her problems outside production. It was pretty obvious that in the song and dance numbers, Maureen was usually singing halfway while the playback music played on. Aside from her lacking effort to play Marsha, production had to work around these problems the whole time. Number 8. Bobby Got Spoiled Mike Lookinland was also brought back to play Bobby, yet since he was now a teen going through a rebel phase, he also gave the producers a hard time. Not only was he not interested in the role, he demanded double the pay to play the part of Bobby again. Sid and Marty were so desperate to bring the original cast together, they agreed to his feisty demand. But while filming episodes, it seems that one character spotted Mike's lack of enthusiasm and gave him a piece of their mind. Out of the whole cast, Florence Henderson decided to tell Mike how bad he was at doing his job. She followed him one day outside the studio and pushed him against the car. Following a sharp finger poke to the chest, she demanded that he's either in or out of acting his part. The bullying trick worked, and as a result, Mike decided that his days of being a rebel were over. He took the role seriously and put loads of effort into his acting, singing, and dancing. Number 9. Carol Wears the Pants This Time Who would have known that Mrs. Brady would be the one that held this family together? Florence Henderson played a very docile housewife in the original series, but for this variety hour, she was a leader on and off the set. It wasn't uncommon that she would yell at the other actors to take their roles more seriously. And since Florence was an aspiring singer and dancer, it showed she was upping her game, showing how the Brady mom kept a tight ship. Not only was she one of the few actors who took the role seriously, she believed in Sid and Marty Croft's vision of the Brady Bunch Variety Hour. Sometimes at the cost of her co-star's disgrace on set. Even with the switch in gears of her housewife nature, she was usually the one who was telling her husband Mike what he's doing wrong. She also proved she could take charge of how their TV show is supposed to be done. Carol was truly empowered in this version of the Brady Bunch that no one expected to see. Yet her husband Mike was reduced to more of a sidekick to Carol's authority in this show. For a variety show in the mid-70s, this was a new and bold statement that modern families were getting used to seeing. Number 10. Celebrities Crashing the Set While filming at the KTLA studio in Los Angeles, it was often a revolving door for other productions that were being filmed there at the same time. Every single episode featured at least two well-known celebs that were involved in the story. Aside from the big guest stars that showed up, including Vincent Price, Milton Berle, and even Charo, some decided to visit the Brady set by accident. It seems comedian Chevy Chase and musician Paul Schaefer were doing a show at the KTLA studio as well. They would often visit the set to make jokes, but usually to watch the underwater swim girls. 
Throughout the nine shows produced, many of the Brady kids would hang out in Chevy Chase's office, goofing around in between filming, and usually to pass the time. And in 1976, Chevy Chase was a rising star in the Hollywood elite, giving the Brady cast a good look at what a professional actor is really like, and it was well worth it. But then again, not everyone can rise to the top as Chevy Chase did back then. As much as the Brady Bunch Variety Hour was concerned, it did poorly in ratings, and audiences just didn't understand the masterful message that was being told. At least, that is until now. If you are an original Brady Bunch fan, let us know how you feel about the show in the comments. Did it carry on the Brady Bunch legacy, or did it tarnish the love you had for the original show? And before you go anywhere, make sure you subscribe to Factsverse for more videos like this.